Good morning, sir. Myself, Dr. Pankaj Kumar Pandya, junior resident in Government Medical College, Kota. Today, my paper topic is Diagnostic Approach in Bony Hydratosis. Abstract, bony involvement of hydrated cyst is very rare manifestation of hydrated disease that is mistaken for sacroiliitis and produces severe escalating lower back pain. We are reporting a case of bony hydrated cyst with disseminated hydrocosis in 42-year-old male patient that involved left pelvic bone, left sacroiliac joint, and left femoral head and neck, including muscles, the lung, and the peritoneum, which was diagnosed by ultrasonography, CT scan, and MRI. Learning objective to diagnose bony hydrated cyst and its type, to differentiate them on imaging from their post differential diagnosis, including aneurysmal bone cyst, giant cell tumor, and fibrous dysplasia. Case report a 42 year old male patient present to orthopedic department with complaint of low back and pain radiating towards the left thigh and leg with no changes in pain when resting for four months. He had no medical history of not and was not taking any medications before the orthopedician advised a plan X ray of pelvis and the patient was taken to the radiology department for X-ray. His complete blood count, C-reactive levels, sediment EFR and urea create, and alanin, amino transfer and aspartate amino transfer level were normal within limit. The radiological investigations, X-ray pelvis, plan radiogram. Plan radiogram image number one showed multiple expansion lytic lesions with thinning of cortex are seen in left sacral ala, SI joint, left iliac bone, and left ischium left superior and inferior pubic rami and left femur involving the head and neck of the femur. After X abnormal X-ray finding, systemic serial radiological evolution of lesion by ultrasound, NCCT, MRI, and contrast MRI was done. On ultrasound, B mode USG, image number 2A and 2B is longitudinal ultrasound image of pelvis shows well-defined double-walled cystic lesion with internal septation seen in pelvic cavity and intramuscular pain. plan of the left thigh in image number 2B. Then non-contrast NCCT of abdomen and pelvis. Image number 3, A, B, C, and D shows multiple lytic lesion in left sacral ala, left iliac bone, left ischium, left superior and inferior pubic rami, left femur involving the left side neck of femur with multiple cystic lesion with internal septation seen in pelvic cavity and transcular plane. The another image of NCCT abdomen and pelvis. Image number 3, E, F, G, H, Show multiple cystic lesion with internal septation seen in pelvic cavity, pelvirectal lesions along left iliac vessels and left internal plane of left thigh and gluteal lesions with cystic lesion in left sacrum, left belly bone, and left side head and neck of femur. Then another CT, NCCT image of abdomen and pelvis. Uh, the image number three I show large cystic lesion with internal septation in right lower lobe of the lung. Image number three J shows large cystic lesion with internal septation and few areas of calcification seen in left thigh muscles. The image number 3i shows the lung hydrated cyst and the, the image number 3j shows the hydrated cyst in intramuscular plane. Then radiological evol evolution of MRI of abdomen and pelvis. Image number 4a and 4b shows T2 weighted MRI image shows multifocal intraosseous T2 hyperintense cystic lesion seen involving the left sacral ala, left iliac bone, left ischium, left superior and inferior pubic rami, and left femur involving the left side neck of femur up to mid diaphyseal region up to length of 12 cm. A pathological fracture of left-sided neck of femur and multiple well-defined T2 hyperintense cystic lesions were noted in pelvic cavity and left thigh muscles. The image number 4C and 4D is the T2 ister. Images show multiple well-defined T1 and multiple well-defined T1 hyperintense and T2 ister hyperintense cystic lesions were noted in, in the pelvis cavity, left sided pelvic muscles, gluteal muscles, and left side inguinal lesion with large shift measuring 50 cross 81 cross 121 mm in pelvic peripheral lesion. The cystic lesion was seen at various stages of development, with some of them having internal daughter cyst and few of them having a unilocular appearance with double membrane wall that indicated a hydrated cyst and its daughter hydrated cyst. The histopathological examinations, the image number 5A is a pathological examination with external air cellular laminated cuticle of cyst wall with multiple scoliosis. Image number 5B and 5C is an intraoperative image during the surgery, shows a hydrated cyst. And image number D is a post-operative image of a pelvis and thigh. Hydrated cyst were resected surgically. Discussion, the hydrated disease is a worldwide zoonosis caused by echinococcus step 1 
infection with echinococcus type 1, echinococcus has two forms, hydrated and unilocular cyst disease caused by echinococcus granulus and alveolar cyst disease caused by echinococcus multilocularis. Echinococcus granulosus is the most common cause of hydrated disease in human. Human act as an intermediate host through the contact with the dependent host air through injection of contaminated food. One, once the egg are Egg are in the intestinal tract, they have from oncospil and then penetrate the mucosa and enter the circulation. When they reach the host viscera, they insist and develop into mature larval cyst. Sacroiliac involvement of hydrated disease is a very rare manifestation of rare manifestation. Hydrated cyst of echinococcus granulation in the echinococcus granulosus tends to affect the liver in 50 to 70 percent of patients. They learn approximately 25% of patients and other organs, including brain and heart, less than 10% of patients. Incidence of bone, bony echinococcus is about 0.5 to 1%, like sacroiliac joint. The patients are often asymptomatic and infection is usually detected incidentally with imaging studies performed for other reasons. Symptoms are usually related to mass effect caused by the LR cyst. The radiological finding of bone hydrated cyst disease are not specific. In the absence of visceral involvement and clinical air, air serological data, it is often impossible to make a correct diagnosis. Osteolytic areas of varying size that may cause and they cause cortical thinning and destruction may be seen. The lack of osteoporosis and bone thickening in host bone and the presence of intralesional calcification were found, the, found to be typical for hydrated bone disease and were useful for in differential diagnosis. Other non-specific findings such as small areas of osteolysis with undefined margin between the under, undefined, underdefined areas of bone thickening and sclerosis and sometimes periosteal reaction may be observed. Hydrated cyst may be visualized and evaluated with ultrasound CT scan and MRI because its easy applications and relatively low cost ultrasound is most widely used modality. CT and MRI may be useful for case in which greater anatomical detail is required to establish the local localization and number of cysts and the presence and absence of rotor cyst and presence of ruptured and calcified cyst. USG ultra is on ultrasound. Depending on biological activity of cyst, ultrasound appearance of hydrated disease can vary from pure cystic structure to calcified solid mass. Several classification systems are proposed based on ultrasound appearance. In, world, in WHO classification system, cystic echinococcus type 1 CE1 refers to unilocular cyst. Type 2 CE2 is a multilocular cyst. Type 1 CE and type 2 CE cyst are biologically active reasons. In type CE third cyst, they may be free floating membrane within the cyst cavity that give rise to a water lily sign, a solid component with rotor cyst. Type CE three cyst are considered transitional term of biological activity. Type CE four and CE five cyst are echogenic and calcified structure that are often non viable. CT, on CT scan, it may be useful in obese patient, patient with eczema. Excessive intestinal gas, yeah, those who have undergone previous abdominal surgery. On CT imaging, cyst food is usually of water density, internal septa, and wall calcification can be readily detected by the CT scan. CT is better than ultrasound tool of detection of complications such as intravisory rupture, cyst infection. On, on CT scan, round oval cystic mass with sharp and thin edges with without contrast enhancement are typical. Bone hydrated disease may also mimic. Abscess their tumor on CT images. On MRI, liver hydrated cyst may have T2 hypointense ring that is thought to represent a collagen rich outer layer of cyst. Water cyst can be seen as a cystic structure attached to germinal layer that are hypointense relative, with, relative to intracystic fluid on T1 weighted image and hyperintense on T2 weighted image. Differential diagnosis for hydrated cyst is simply accepted cyst, aneurysmal bone cyst, giant cell tumor. Fibrous dysplasia, control sarcoma, abscess, lytic exclusive bone lesion, chronic osteomyelitis, neurofibromatosis, fibrocystic disease, and tuber tuber tuberculosis. The complications of hydrated cyst are infection, biliary rupture, hemorrhage, mechanical damage to other tissue, allergic reaction, and anaphytic shock, up to persistence of water cyst, sudden intracystic decompression, leading of biliary fistula. Conclusion in conclusion, echinococcosis is frequently misdiagnosed and mis. In situation with uncommon localization, when determining the cause of lower back, back discomfort, it is important to consider hydrated cyst, especially when treating individuals who have positive medical history or resides in endemic region. In this insistence, a man with lower back discomfort has cystic pelvic bone lesion. 
a femoral head, neck mass with soft tissue extension on CT and MRI scan. Since the patient resides in the nation for hydrated disease, wide dispute, and there are concomitant lung and peritoneal cyst, this there should be suspicious that the illness has one component which is verified histologically after surgically. These are the my references topic. Thank you, sir. Thank mm -hmm. you.